Welcome back, everyone, to Wall Street Week. Bob Olstein is still here with us. And Bob, you know, you've had some pretty good performance. I'm looking at your all uh, all value cap fund. Uh, it's it's up over 16 percent this year. Your small cap fund up, up 25 percent. Wow. Uh, so, what are some of the names that have really propelled you? Well, the, the, the regional banks and the uh, mutual fund management companies have been the biggest contributors uh, to our performance. We, uh, we uh, had a, a rough 2015 waiting for that to happen, but boy, have we been paid back. And that's how value investing is. You have to have patience and a very strong stomach while you're waiting for people to recognize the value. Well, give us some ideas. I mean, some of the major holdings in the, in, in the fund right now are what? Well, rather than give you the major holdings, I'm going to give you some of the ones that are just as undervalued as the regional banks were. All right, good. That, that people can look at within the fund, Bed Bath & Beyond. Everybody's beating them up. Their margins are going down. Their revenues are hardly going up. Here's a company that if you take the margins down to 9.5%, 10%, they went for 11, 12. And then you not only do that, you see that they really have spent a lot of money moving onto the internet, and they do have a, a unique other concepts like Bye Bye Baby. Here's a company that's free cash flow, okay, is running at about 13%. They have $6 in earnings power two years down the road. Their, their shares outstanding is going to go from $150 million to $120 million. What a value play this is. We would expect private equity is going to move. Yeah, yeah, but what about the fundamentals within the retail sector itself? I mean, it, everything's moving. As you said, they're moving online, but frankly, everything's been moving to Amazon, which has been extremely competitive in terms of pricing. So where does that leave a bed bath? Well, I'm going to sit there and collect my 13% <laughs> until people recognize it. That's in a 2.5% interest rate market. Everybody's moving to Amazon, but Amazon sells at... I don't know, 300 times earnings, 200 times earnings. Bed Bath sells at seven times earnings. And I'm going to take the cash. We don't think they're dead. We think, still think they're real. You know, uh, I just heard you whisper, though. You said private equity may be looking. And you've had a great, and I've chatted stocks with you for 20-some-odd years now. You've got a great track record of identifying companies that are going to get taken out. You think Bed Bath & Beyond is going to be a takeout? We've had 40 stocks taken out of our portfolio Incredible. in the last 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Reuters called us the breeding ground for private equity investors. I wouldn't be surprised if it, me and I was private equity, I'd be moving on Bed Bath right tomorrow. Uh, another one, Oracle. Here's a company, and you compare, compare it to Salesforce.com. Here's Oracle with free cash flow adjusted for stock compensation of 265. They're going to a different method of accounting because they're moving to the cloud. They already have four billion in the cloud. It's on its way to 10 billion. They don't have profits yet, but it's going to magnify in the next three years because now they've had all the expenses of moving over and the earnings are going to flow. And there's Salesforce.com. If you adjust for stock compensation, 25 cents a share they're earning, selling at $70. So when I look at Oracle, they should be earning 60 cents a share. I'll give them the 300 multiple of Salesforce.com. <laughs> it's worth 180 But seriously, right, good point. we think right. it's worth $52. All right, all right, Bob, there has been speculation on Wall Street the last couple of weeks that Disney might be interested in acquiring Netflix. Now, you're a Disney shareholder, and you're an investor in Disney, and you're against this. Uh, you even wrote a letter to Disney CEO Bob Iger, which we're going to share on air here for the first time. Let me just read. In our opinion, the proposed transaction with Netflix is not only ridiculous, but would result in a blow to both Disney and your outstanding reputations. Should a transaction occur, we would be one of many investors who would lose confidence in the decision-making process at Disney and be extremely vocal in our disappointment. Well, that's a pretty strong letter. Why don't you want to see Disney buy Netflix? Well, let me ask a you stock, a stock, by the way, that you called the most overvalued stock in the marketplace last time you joined us. I still believe it is. Okay. Here's a company that Disney is going to earn somewhere around $8 billion of free cash flow. And here's a company, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, Netflix, that's, gonna, that's losing in free cash flow every year $1.5 billion. They both have the same amount of capitalized expense on the balance sheet. Would you rather own Orange is the New Black? And they have some good product there, but they're still losing a lot of money. Or would you rather own Star Wars, Moana, Frozen, Donald Duck? Let's go on. So basically, this Bernstein analyst, and I'm, it's incredible that this research hit the street, says Disney could take a 30% hit to their earnings and it would be fine. 
I find that is absolutely incredibly ridiculous. I had similar conversations with uh, with Michael Eisner 12 years ago, and he took the he never took the, the potion. And I don't think Bob Iger would even consider anything like this. It, it, it would be safe. But let's, there's been lots of rumors, right? I mean, there's a, Twitter was another rumor. Right. That Disney might go after Twitter. Is this where is this coming from? Do you think that Disney and Bob Iger really? feel as though they, they need to do something? Well, here's what he said. He was quoted in Barron's or somewhere, I think it was Barron's, where he basically said he needs to get closer to the customer. He's as close to the customer yeah. as he can. <laughs> Should he buy movie theaters to get closer to the customer? This guy's got the best product. This company is, is golden. It's still it's worth $125 a share, we believe. If he buys Oracle, my uh, not Oracle, Netflix, <laughs> my prediction is the stock's heading down 30% the next day. So you'd rather see, just so the viewers understand, you'd rather see this company continue to buy back shares make accretive acquisitions and basically build up the cash balances. He's made some great acquisitions in the past. The Captain Marvel acquisition, the Pixar acquisition. P product is king going forward. Don't go out and buy distribution. Distribution is too competitive. I don't think Bob, I probably was probably laughing at the Bernstein report. Mm. Have you gotten a response from him yet? Not yet. Just went out two days ago. I'm expecting it today. <laughs> yeah. He's going to watch this and he's going to respond. All right. And um, we're big supporters of Disney, by the way. And Bob Iger. I know Iger. you are. And I'm Bob Iger. Sure.